Welcome to the Austin Behind the Creative Scenes podcast, where we explore how creative individuals already in the industry made it, are making it, or even got out of it. Their everyday actions could be the things you are struggling with as a performing artist. I'm Austin, your host, and together we'll embark on a journey to discover a little bit more about the real life behind the creative scenes. Join us as we delve into inspiring stories, expert insights, and practical tips from people who have been there, done that, and learned from it. Whether you're a seasoned pro or you're just starting your journey, this podcast is for you. So let's dive in and explore the world of the entertainment industry one series at a time. This podcast is sponsored by the award-winning Mortgages for Actors, the financial services for you and your family. Visit the website to find out more. <laughs> Tori and Matt, welcome back to the show and thank you for coming back on. Thank you Thanks very for much having for having us you. back on. Pleasure. Um, one of the reasons we have have you back, blah, 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 start again. One of the reasons we had you back on was because you've just um, well you've put into action all the the new film stuff, haven't you, for Dagger? And um, awesome. tell us yeah. more. So it's all sort of suddenly happened, as in you know, suddenly as in the film world, we've been slogging away when, for a few months to try right. and get it to distributors and people, and then suddenly they go, yes. Give us all the paperwork. Give us now. all the legal stuff. We, we want all the technical stuff. We actually wanted it yesterday, but we didn't actually know about it until today. So yeah, yeah. so it's running to catch up, which is you know. Fun. And then it'll be wait, 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 wait. Yeah. But um, but yes, it we've got the release dates now confirmed. So it is Brilliant. definitely coming out in. Can I get this right? The US, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand yeah. on the second of April. And okay. then UK and Ireland on the eighth of April. Yes, and then in February yes. we've got various <laughs> we've got various Q and A screenings. We'll sort of potter around the country. Yeah, and we're, we're sort of yeah adding more and more to this. So we'll be in London and Oxfordshire and Somerset. And this is our film Dagger, which we oh, did, yeah. we, we, did, we talked a little bit about, didn't we? You sort time. of touched on it the last time, and that's why we wanted to update because obviously oh. there was right. You see, I there's took a whole like. Yeah, we're talking about what's coming out, and we haven't actually said Austin what the film like is. Austin would like to know what it is. What are we talking about? Tell Fair us enough. more about your film. <laughs> um, okay, so this one's it was a bit of an experiment for us. With someone asked, um, had we ever thought about doing a sort of a found footage film? Um, mm -hmm. We hadn't. I like, I do like them when they're good. They are amazing. You know, there's a yeah. few images from things like BBC's Ghost Watch types um and Blair Witch Project there's like a few things that I, if I think of that a specific image still sends yeah. you know gives me chills um I mean oh well you know, as filmmakers we like doing things we haven't done before that's why we kind of, of course, flop yeah. around um from genre to genre although we have done a folk horror thing before um we thought we'd just give it a go to be honest so from from going oh have we ever thought of doing one within about three weeks when we are doing it we raised most of the money at that point um and we some of the money we raised yeah. some of them. We raised enough to get the actual film on, you know, yes. on the boots done. We didn't yeah. have any money for post-production, or as usual, to pay ourselves. Um, yeah. Sorry, mortgages for actors. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, we'll talk uh, about it. Yeah, and, then, and we just, that found footage is, is quite, in, we wrote a script, it's only about 60 pages long, because um, the whole idea is that it was very improvised as well. So we would give actors structures, it was mostly in a big house in Wales um, near the Bracken Beacons. Yeah. As we should be saying now. I think I got that right. Very good. Wales. I'm sorry. I think it's very good. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. what the first bit. Um, yeah. So it's all around there. And it was, but we tried to do something a little bit different. So um, there's, there's a sort of a, a film team that are making a slightly. He's gone seamlessly straight into the synopsis, by the way. Oh, yeah. We just, in case, just in case you, you, want you, me to stop? you missed that. <laughs> we didn't, we <laughs> didn't notice. So the synopsis is great. Carry on. You talk as much as you want to talk. <laughs> well, no, I'm not very good. I just, as I said, I'll just keep going. Well, I, um, yeah. So there's a, there's a film team making a slightly kind of, pardon the language, but wanky kind of commercial. It's a little bit Jean Luc Godard. They feel high end fashion high -end content. Fashion I think content. Is actually yeah. how you would describe it. Um, you know, and they're kind of setting it up. So that's how we get around the convention of why are they filming? So there's a sort of um, okay. you know a video diary being made of that. Yeah. At the same time, our sort of heroes, heroines. Um, are these two YouTuber kind of thieves. They feel like they're, they think they're doing things for the greater good, but at the end of the day, they are you know, stealing things and they might be giving yeah. it to food banks and things like that. Um, but they are still 
you know, stealing that stuff, and they record all that. So they're posing as the caterers on this shoot. Oh, okay. By the time they turn up, it's the whole big house is looking very, very quiet and empty, and then they find mm-hmm. an iPad. Uh, thank you, Apple. Um, uh, with and that sort of takes us into the story, and I don't want to give any more away. But then the sort of the two timelines kind of merge, and, and yeah, no, yeah. I mean, Good. well, no. I think you can give a bit more away. Oh, th- of course, it's, it's like an eighteenth-century a... druid. It's killing people. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's sort of what everyone's been waiting okay, for. Okay, yeah. So basically, there's a dagger, dagger, um, like the film, D A G R. That's the Welsh version. We hope because we've gone to the posters now. Um, yeah, they kind of summon this uh, guy who, in the 18th century, um, was trying of using druidry uh, as you know a means of trying to gather power, and he was killing people. It wasn't great. Mm-hmm. That's not what they normally do. Um, and so yeah, he basically goes on a bit of a murderous rampage. And that's the thing he's with, risen from the dead. Yeah, and he's trying to kind of mm-hmm. kind of reenact one of his uh, rituals like he did in the, in the good old days um, to kind of get power into his standing stone. And yeah. Okay, that's good. good. I mean, half that, that, so that was seamlessly into the backstory of the film. That's all right. Yeah, you get to so see we, the bad guy quite a lot. You, then, like a lot of the found footage is like on um, Blair Witch. You don't get to see a lot of the bad guys, do you? So it's. Do. do you see this from the beginning? Do you already know what's happening, and it sort of builds the wow. story? You see a little bit. It does. It's sort of it's almost a comedy, really. So the first half, first forty minutes, or so it is you, definitely a comedy. It's a comedy, of, and there's like little bits and bobs, as in, so some people will see things, some people won't, mm-hmm. and then as the two kind of timelines join, they see and they get because also the the girls they get look at this footage and go, but surely this is a joke, you know? They can see yeah, they think it's all a setup. They think like, this yeah. is just part of the commercial. There's a standing stone. The druid keeps playing with the cameras, and and then they see some bad stuff going down. So we do see it, and then. I think we have brought this is the te- this will be the test you see we've brought it in potentially earlier than most found footage films do yeah so that a life can go down well or like a ton of bricks uh, with the found footage fans you know but like the yeah. whole point is we like to experiment and, and play yeah, that's but, really good. but you 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 get to hear about the backstory because of the creepy yes. ni- 1990s video footage yeah so there's another mm-hmm. little strand in 1998 there's a professor ash blake who had been in the house and they find these basic VHS um, yeah. tapes and it's sort of he you know he, he's working on his thesis and he's discovered this guy this is slightly ever so slightly based on truth as in there was a man in the 18th century who said he discovered all these druid texts and they should all you know follow him and this is the way yeah. and they ended up being they weren't entirely well they're completely made up basically um <laughs> it's sort of based on that and that's what so professor is kind of looking into stuff goes wrong with him some death, quite a lot of death. Lots of lots death. Of, yeah, lots of death. Yeah. Well, well, we did talk about slasher so... last time, so here is that slasher you were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> it's still only slasher esque because, as you know, I'm not. I'm yeah. still not a big fan of blood. Yeah. Slasher, so, slasher without yeah. blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but there are certain rules that you sort yes. of have to abide by when shoot, doing a found footage film, which we weren't, <laughs> we were not aware of until well, we had to learn you. Well, and you had a very lovely chat with Jed, didn't you? Yeah, so the uh, the producer of, um, I don't know if you ever saw Host. Um, so uh, it was Ooh, kind of a yes, big I thing have. during the lockdown. Yeah. There was a big seance online. Excellent, and, excellent mm, found yeah. footage film. Um, so the producer really and amazing. co-writer Jed Shepard, I check we've kind of known him now from various bits and bobs. So he just gave me like a little sort of, um, like a little lecture on, like, these are the rules of found footage. Try and do this and you mm-hmm. know, that kind of yeah. sort of fun stuff. And it's, yeah, so everyone has to, Basically, deserve to die. They have. There's got to be a reason. Like a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So even though, so like the girls, the girls. I'm so sorry. The, the, the young women. The young women. Um, they YouTube. You know, the Gen Z. Um, even though they're doing good stuff, they are actually stealing. So okay. Yeah. The Tory plays a director of the of the commercial shoot, and she's okay. very sort of a bit of a, 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 a bit of a. <laughs> bit Can of I say? No. Cut so out do you want? Um, You've already said <laughs> ranking. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we can edit out that if you want. Um, <laughs> no, don't worry. You should don't edit anything. Yeah, so you so everyone. Think, so everyone, everyone has a reason, yeah. really. Um, even if it's, a, if it's a small one. So like the actor, Matt, played by Matt Barber, mm-hmm. um, who's in Downton Abbey, um, and lots of lots of fun things. Uh, he's sort of a typically what a lot of people think actors are, you know, a bit yeah. of a 
Also, uh, which they're not most of the time. But he's, well, he's, he's quite like, self-involved. He's self-involved. Doesn't really know what's yeah. going on, and yeah. you know, it's all about like yeah. So yeah, yeah, there's always little fun things to play with. Yeah, yeah. That's good. But it, because it was improvised, you just we just gave the actors a structure. Yeah, and a script, and then go. But look, make this your own. So like, Tori is called Tori. Matt is called Matt. Yeah. Um, you know, and so you just wound them up. Yeah, they all had cameras. Like so, the YouTubers had like their own little cameras, but they had like little. Uh, bum bags because they're obviously meant to be doing hidden camera stuff and they place cameras around the place um but then each location was at, you know 360 degrees you light it subtly cleverly push them in there and let them go so there's some scenes with the the youtubers in the car in the script it's probably two lines of like they're just chatting in the car no story just character stuff maybe say this line and then okay. you know they would drive off for two hours so we have you know we can make a full film just of those two yeah. trotting around being funny that's honest. interesting actually so did you have to do a lot of editing with that to get the right conversation oh. going yeah, yeah. so a lot, lot of footage amazing amazing editor william honeyball who's been on everything since we sort of started 15 years ago i mean now. he's a genius um he had you know he could have made seven films after because at one point we were worried like oh is there enough stuff and we yeah. like there is yeah there is enough stuff it's plenty okay. of stuff yeah yeah and then it was kind of like oh no hang on didn't didn't Ellie say something about like posh coffee? Let's let's see that version because it was never the same, which yeah. was great. Um, that's what, yeah, because it because so much of it was ad lib. Yeah, but we what we had to do is like send out little documents and things of like cinematography, and you know, so they had to think about you know a lot of found footage stuff. Like makes you seasick because it's so handheld and so that's yeah. why. So one team is a filmmaker, one and the other team are YouTubers, so they do have an idea of how to frame things. So it looks real, yeah. but is also still nice to look at. Yes, you know, we... really using negative framing at the end at the right moment, yeah. but making it look like it just happens to be there. You know, yes, yeah, there's a few. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully, um, people might think it's rubbish. I don't know. But the aim was to make it look as nice as possible yeah but with yeah. that we're, we're still making it look real so we have to sometimes go that actually looks too good can you yeah you know, can you run in and it just be slightly angled a little bit differently yeah. and things yeah well because we filmed everything on iphone yes they were apple were very very nice to us Obviously. because of our because of our last film infinitum which we shot yeah. during lockdown just on iPhone um, and with literally just the two of us. Um, they And they were very lovely and supportive of the sort of press and advertising and marketing of that film. Um, and so we let them know really early on that actually we were planning to do a found footage film and that actually, you know, would they would they kind of help us out with... So so they all the equipment yeah. was iPhone, it's iPad, really good. Apple. Uh, and how we monitor because we had six cameras flying around yeah. so like how, you know, they helped us work out how we genuinely like we could properly like you know book a proper film track that on monitors and that yeah. sort of stuff and sound That's good was good. properly rather than just recorded on iphone everyone was mic'd yeah. up we hid microphones everywhere so um and yeah. it is amazing how far you can push them i mean like mm. i know people keep banging on about this and you know and it sounds like a such an old fart thing to say it just kind of like <laughs> everyone's got a Smartphone, movie smart. movie camera in their pocket nowadays anyone can make a film but it is kind of true i mean like the, what they're doing now with um iphones and other smartphones and like the cameras on them are just uh, it's incredible and it is amazing oh. because it gives you so much more fluidity and so much more scope and flexibility to to like to some of the shots that we got there's no like that would have you would have had to have a whole rig and like you know some of the kind of creepier really creepier scary shots yeah were literally just an iphone sort of on a on a big pole but going pole. elevated up so yeah. it's like she's being thrown down the stairs mm. and you know like kind of yeah sort of, um, that's clever you can get really creative but you still have to treat the whole thing like an actual film you yeah. know like if the sound is bad it's not you know if the lighting is bad it's cheap, you know that sort of stuff so it's just that you get a lot more footage because you can work quickly yeah. with yeah the, doesn't mean we don't want to play with a lovely um Ari, Ari on the next one. That'd be nice. Or maybe on the next one, the one after that. We do it have a plan. You wonder, though, doesn't it? it makes you wonder yep. where things are going for the future, doesn't it? Because, I mean, does this give uh, almost, uh, does it sort of open up the world for people at home who thought, you know, I've always wanted to be a photographer or a film a recorder or, you know, anything like that. Yeah. But I hope, I really don't afford stuff. the cameras because they're, you know, they're massive amounts of money. So yeah. you still, you can't just kind of like, 
pick it up and it does things. You've got to learn how to use it, but it is like a camera. And to turn it into something which you go, yeah, this is going to be 4K in a cinema. You know, you've got to, but that, it's all learnable these days. You know, if someone, yeah. if people yeah. like us can do it, who are not technical in any way, shape, or form, which is why it took us so long to get onto this call, going, Google Chrome, where's that gone? Um, you know, if we can do it, then other people can. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's a kind of classic cliche, isn't it? It's about the story. And, the and what serves the story best? You know, there's always going to be uh, films that require a yeah. much more um, heavy lifting with regards to the equipment that you use and the crew that you, the number of crew that you have and, you know, the art and production design that you yeah. have. I mean, like, you know, the magic of that is never going to dwindle. Um, yeah, we but, can do Mission Impossible. On right. That, so. <laughs> but, you know, there is still the space Challenge. for little indies that, you know, can can be made on. And, yeah, without sort of bringing it all down, like, there's a lot of changes, especially in the UK at the moment, with, like, finance. And it's yeah. getting harder and harder and harder to find finance for everyone. And within this mm. little kind of group of about 30 filmmakers, everyone who, you know, people who've been making feature film after feature film have suddenly gone, it's tough. what has happened? Like, well, we need to adapt to this, otherwise we're just going to, yeah. you know fall into the shadows you know unless you are sort of on board with one of the streamers that's financing mm -hmm. your movie it's really really tough yeah um and so you know there's sort of as that middle kind of bra bracket of you know the sort of mid-level budget and low to mid-level budgets are kind of just basically being pushed out entirely um, yeah i mean even sort of no one or two million no thanks to getting rid of things like the SEIS. But yes, that's the thing. I mean, the, the good old the government um, <clears throat> have made things incredibly hard um, with getting rid of things like that. Yeah. But yeah, but so I think, you know, but then, but yeah. what proves is that actually you can make a, a found footage film on an iPhone for a lot less money and yeah. there is still a market there. There's still an appetite there, there for yeah. it. You know, we've, we have got distribution, you know, across. Well, of the world and so. infinitum it wasn't found footage at all it was you know and the yeah. american distributors who put it in cinemas over there in 2021 or whatever they didn't realize we'd shot it on iphone because the salespeople had told us not to say anything at that point wow. um, and we were like we should be proud of this and tell people yeah. like just wait until it's been sold yeah. um and then then you can tell them you know it's no, that's you know, that's really good because it also it means that if they didn't even notice it and they do this every day with different films yeah it proves just how well that works doesn't it yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, that's you know, it's it's getting good people who know what they're doing, how to make stuff look yeah. good, and it's post production. Like spending the time and the money, you know, on the sound stuff and the other all the other bits. Like, don't. That's the thing. Never rush that bit. Yeah. Even if you kind of, you know, we've missed so many deadlines for festivals that were like, yeah, yeah I'd love to see it. Sounds great. I was like, okay, maybe we made a mistake or not. I don't know. But we said no because at this point, it is not. Is nowhere near the film that it is now. It's not a film. And yeah. if we've done that, then you know, and people don't watch things twice, realistically, when they're kind of judging things. So you know, spending the time getting the sound design rights, and you know, all the, all the other elements, I think mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's you know, worth it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, cast-wise, you got you did quite well. You've got um, I not I jotted these down earlier. So you've got Ellie Duckles, who was from the A list. So yeah, yes. uh, good. She's obviously knows what she's doing and very professional. <laughs> Um, she really she was, and camera as was well. Amazing yeah. at yeah, filming, sure. like uh, so good. Thank goodness. We well, she, luckily, <laughs> Tori and Ellie did a lot of the actual filming of the the clever stuff. Yeah, it was very good. But like because both of them were because both of them were very experienced and thought about the the, the filming side as well. That really helped. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, really no, yeah. Ellie was awesome. Um, sorry. Carry on. Carry on. Carry oh, on. So you also had um, Riz Moritz. Moritz, I hope I'm saying that name right. You are. Um, who? This is kind of her big debut, isn't it? Really, she's done a few little bits and bobs, but this is her yeah. full on. In she's front of awesome. The screen. She's so brilliant, Riz. Um, so the reason that we actually got Ellie and Riz, so we we set out basically. Um, we were very clear that we sort of wanted two friends, really, that because it, it was so important that a lot of the beginning film is just the 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 two guys in the in the car just kind of like bantering and between yeah. and sort of you know it's a road trip sort of thing for the first sort of 20 minutes or whatever and so it was really important that that felt authentic and real and um and fun and we wanted it to be funny 
and so we we was we did a few auditions and got people to tape and they were all friends and and then um but they were they were sort of younger so so Ellie and um and Riz are actually a little bit older than what they play in the in the in the movie um and and it was you know we had some amazing tapes come through and then but I remembered that I'd worked um with both of the two of them like the year before um on this tv show that we shot out in Belgium and um and so I contacted them and I hadn't realized but they'd actually stayed in contact because I was a bit like well they know each other because they work together but I don't know whether they were actually friends um and it so happened that yeah they just kept in touch and and they were like yeah definitely up for it and I mean it it was amazing because the chemistry between the two of them like makes it it really does it really makes the film um and they're awesome they really are they're brilliant yeah, I mean the timing and the intelligence between like the conversations. There's no way we could have scripted most of yeah. what they were saying yeah. at all. It was like, there's no, I wouldn't have, we wouldn't have thought of that at all. They're just so quick and clever. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I think we really each other that. really well. I take it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's really yeah. good. So, um, you well, you filmed in South Wales, which is notorious for weather conditions, shall we say? How did yes. it go? Did you have to mm-hmm. stop filming a lot, or did you manage to get it all done? No, we were so really lucky because it yeah. was. <laughs> was it may the beginning of may yeah it was like early may so it could have been okay. just yeah yeah it could have been a washout yeah but um, i mean a lot of the films inside but whenever we were outside it was you know it was like glorious sunshine yeah it was lovely yeah. <laughs> to be perfectly honest yeah really good. I mean, we've always been quite lucky with weather the same we, we did a film on, mm. um up in the north touching all on the wood. yeah on a on a on an island in scotland called the isle and you know, and we we did have things like Force Nine Gales and stuff, but I everything always no no no, but everything worked with us. Like as in as in just as we went, okay, so the final shot always getting a bit windy. Okay, cut, <laughs> massive storm. But like you know, as in yeah, you know, we it could have been yeah. a disaster. Yeah, I mean, I do remember being pretty cold on that film. Yeah, that was fun though. Well, <laughs> I think you were just rose tinted glasses. No, I loved it at the time as well. Right. <laughs> We could have yeah, been much worse. Yeah, we were, but yeah, we were very lucky. And what else is, I mean, like it's so. It was a beautiful position that yeah. we that we found to film in, and the house was perfect. And yeah, yeah. genuinely, really quite creepy and weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Tori just found that on Airbnb. That was thing. So when we before we knew, and are we going to do this or not? So we found this yeah. house and went, right, just book it. We didn't have the money. That <laughs> that's the one. Um, or equipment, or cast, or crew. Yeah. Went book that. And there we have our dates. Now we need to make yeah. it work. So it gave us a kind of a deadline of like, yeah. this it has to happen because it couldn't happen before because it was the guy's birthday. Mm. It couldn't happen afterwards because it was... The, Rented out? No, it was like something or... to do with the king or something like that. I don't know. Oh, it was the coronation. Oh, the coronation. There we go. Exactly. Oh, yeah. The king. So we had like two <laughs> weeks, we like a two week block event. That is when we are making the film. Yeah. Or not. Oh, that's it. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. So did you film the whole lot in two weeks then? You got it all done? Yes. Yeah. We wow. did well well done. a day actually here in Froome. So all the the stuff in the nineties, we had to we filmed here to try and match up with one of the rooms over there. Mm. Um, but that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so basically it was it so it, how it worked out was we sort of started the shoot um, in Wales with the ad team, and then uh, they went away, and then the um, YouTubers came in, and we sort of shot all of their bit. It's yeah, sort of, yeah. Like a bit of crossover. With it was you a little bit that. of crossover yeah. in the middle, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't shot sequentially, although we each section was. Really. was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So actually, yeah, it was kind of. They sort of had to be because it was improvised. You didn't know, like, and a lot of the, yeah. the scenes they'd start in one room, they go through a corridor, they go up three flights of stairs, and end up in another yeah. room, all kind of all one shot. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff you just go, we have to just keep going and everything's got to be right. It was pretty much all shots. We sort of kind really of had to. I said that. It, was... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't happening at exactly the same time. No. Yeah. That but... would have been hard. Yeah. <laughs> Not even the iPhone could do that. No. Yeah. <laughs> so have you, have you talked to Apple about maybe getting an extension of a contract with them? So, you know, everything you make from now on. Well, <laughs> funny you should say We're going to send this to Sam. And... <laughs> That's the next plan. What we would really, really love to yeah. do is for Apple to be like, hang on a minute, we've got quite a bit of money. And, you know, it would be good to kind of maybe push the use of our, our own equipment and mm-hmm. iPhones. Um, and Which they're like, wanting to do. They want people to do this. Yeah. And I think that, I think they should set up like a kind of um, sort of discovery 
um, fund or yeah, basically, program. where program where they support young filmmakers. I'm or not, you. I'm not, in, have to be young. I'm not including ourselves in this. Uh, <laughs> you yeah. coming young. Uh, coming, yeah. <laughs> um, and I mean that's something that I'd like love for them to do, and for us to kind of champion that. And um, and so you know, so for other filmmakers to kind of help support them, basically, and and talk them through like the process of doing this, but with mm. the support of that, with, with proper feature be... films, as in like you know, yeah, low yeah, budget yeah, yeah. feature films, but yeah, rather than just like little shorts or bits yeah. of content. Because I think a lot yeah. of the struggle for filmmakers is also making that jump from short film to feature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it just seems, I think, a lot of the time so unobtainable because it's, you know, OK, well, we can do a short film over a weekend and I can ask my friends for a favour and all of that. And then suddenly to the leap to feature just seems kind of just like ridiculous. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I can, so speak, I can speak from the heart on that one because, I mean, I've got loads of stories in my head, loads of thoughts that I've had on it. And, you know, when you think to yourself, I really wish I could just make this into a film. But it do, it's right. not. I know it doesn't work like that. But you've got the ideas, and if you don't even have yeah. the start to an idea, uh, the, sorry, yeah. the start to get going on it, um, right. it's almost impossible, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, and I think there is definitely space there that um, Apple could really be supporting kind of young um, creatives in, in yeah, mm. in, and, and sort of help, I guess, basically help this sort of the, the, the indie film industry sort of rejuvenate because it does yeah. feel a little bit like we're all slightly drowning at the moment yeah. um yeah. and i think unless you know unless someone kind of stands up and goes let me you know i'm going to give you a helping hand and it has to be one of the big studios it really does yeah. and it just makes sense that well apple you know with all yeah. of the kit um seems like the obvious choice anyway yeah, I mean, yeah. With all the streaming and that that came up, I mean, there's a there's a bit of a curve to the film industry anyway, isn't there? I mean, it's been up since oh, 20s or whatever when people started to watch it on the big screen, and it's mm -hmm. been up and up and up and up. And then since streaming came out and things like that and the piracy and all those other things, it has started to dip down again. And yeah. it would be nice to, because the experience of a cinema, a proper film, is completely different to watching it, you know, on a phone in your bed. So as much as I love my bed, it's not the same. And um, yeah. 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 Either they've yeah. got to put beds in cinemas or they've got to start making the cinema industry more attractive. And helping people on the ladder would be ideal for that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 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 It's just the start. It's just helping start of like getting there. You give someone a platform, a genuine yeah. platform, and then the support around it to get it out there. Because that's the other thing. You can make a film and have it. And even if it's distributed, that's still there's still a huge job to then get people to listen and therefore to find it and watch it because there's so much stuff out there. Yeah. yeah. If you've got people who have got the, you know, the, the power and the capacity to be able to go, look at this, yeah. we're going to put this in the cinema just for two weeks. Exactly. Yeah. You know, people and would then, watch you know, it. and within the, the streamers have more of a kind of indie filmmaking section. So there is a way to find, you know, these films yeah. rather than just kind of being lost to the ether. Yeah. That's it. So remind us again, when is it coming out in England? Uh -huh. in the UK, the 8th of April. 8th of April. UK and Ireland. UK and Ireland. Uh, Ireland of have uh, 8th of April, yeah. So like Sky, <laughs> iTunes, yeah. Amazon, Google, Xbox. So it'll do the kind of buy rent stuff first yeah. um, to try and power lovely investors back. Um, and then it'll go on to like the subscription sort of yeah. platforms. But we know nothing about that bit. Yeah. Brilliant. Yes. Usually a few yeah. months later, I think. Yeah. It? Yeah. And then the and the American releases on the, the second. second. They snuck in. They were meant to. Uh, it's really interesting to. You mention <laughs> because that's, that's the, basically the reason why they were like, we have to do it like immediately on the back of it. Um, the two releases together because piracy is just such a problem. Yeah. So they sent the, the they sent us a, an email like nine o'clock at night, a couple of days before Christmas, going, yeah, we want the film. And then as soon as we came out of it this year they went we don't need all the stuff now because if we don't get it out now it's going to be pirated and it's going to be everywhere and then there's no point yeah so, no. yeah yeah i mean if you want it <laughs> if you want it to work in your favor you don't want the pirates straight in there do you so um, yeah. i mean no. i love a pirate but not a film one 
it is really interesting that though, because um we we keep getting it from infinitum and, and stuff i mean like well you know there's in india it's you know been done apparently it's quite big apparently in india quite... but we've, it's not released in india <laughs> sold it oh, to yeah. india <laughs> there's so many like sort of video reviews people talking about infinitum like yeah, oh, countless cool, but... video reviews. Well, <laughs> it might get you a discount at a hotel or something, but <laughs> there yeah, you look to the trip to the go Sorry, yeah. Steve, but yeah, exactly. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'll definitely be buying it when it comes out, probably on Amazon. I expect. Um, so that'll be right. great. Have you already got the cogs turning for the next film? Have you already started thinking about it? Yeah, we have quite a lot yeah, of we, cogs. We've got uh, we've got a few plates going at the at the moment um on the line of um try you know galvanizing uh, the apple relationship we are, are wanting to shoot another one on iphone that um, mm-hmm. i've written kind of specifically for that um but really really kind of testing testing and pushing it um, with you know proper crew proper budget proper crew yeah. proper budget um and kind it's but thriller. it's contained yeah. it's um it's sort of set Post biochemical attack, so we're kind of oh, nice. in the near future, but um, mm-hmm. it's a kind of dystopian place that we find ourselves, and um, slightly, everyone's living off grid. Slightly children of men. Yeah, and it's a it's a kind of children of men killing eve, killing eve meets handmaid's tale. tale. Interesting, yeah. fun, all the family. It's <laughs> good, quite a mix there. But no, <laughs> yeah. well, I love a dystopian. F- uh, film and book so awesome brilliant looking forward to that one already uh, so that's called cassandra. cassandra and then um we've got uh king of soho which um it's is... not ours but, but well it is, it is I mean, now yeah I, I wrote it um mm-hmm. so someone came to us with a with the proposition basically yeah. yes yeah, yeah yeah um and that is uh set in predominantly 1971 um around raymond's review bar um, so the Soho in the 70s um, and Roma's Review Bar. And it's um, an extortion plot, basically, that um, it's set in 24 hours. And he wants to find out who's trying to extort money out of him. At the same mm-hmm. time, we meet a couple of women working at the Review Bar who actually turn out to be MI5 agents um, working to try and uncover KGB uh, officers using the oh, wow. Review Bar as a uh, state they- house. So, yeah, so it's, it's cool. It's fun. Um, and and for whenever that one comes out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, hopefully, we should have an announcement fairly soon for like cast attachments and stuff like that. So, yeah, looking out for that around sort of February, March time. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, anyone that's going to look at Dagger, uh, going to watch Dagger, I should say, or download or stream whatever they need to do, what would you say is the best way to watch it? In the dark, with friends? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> With your eyes. Um, yeah. I mean, you could as Theater or TV? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it'd be quite fun on an iPad, though, wouldn't it? Because on an kind iPad. Of, kind of, is, yeah. Which will make sense when you see it. But, uh, but no, of course, in the dark. You've got to yeah. be in the dark. Yeah, yeah. So it's basically, it's essentially a, a folk horror type mm. of thing. So even though a lot of the actual film is during yeah. the day, because I, I was like the idea of having like horror films in the day and see if you can still things make things creepy. It goes dark, obviously, because you need some darkness. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. It's only 77 minutes, which is quite nice as well. So it's quite boom, boom, boom. Yeah. yeah. Smashes through. And it's fun and it's silly and it's it doesn't silly. take itself seriously. Yeah. We know this is a we silly need a film. a bit more of. Yeah. <laughs> well, brilliant. Like I said, I am looking forward to it. So I'm going to stop there. But thank you very much for you both coming online and ha- having a chat with me. It's really good. Um, oh, thanks. Oh, thank you so much for having us again. It's an absolute pleasure. And this time, I'm going to turn it off without cutting you off completely. <laughs> I'll see you both later. Thanks for coming. Bye. 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 If you would like to guest on the podcast, or if you know someone who would, please get in touch via the website www.mortgagesforactors.com or look for us on our social media Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok.